The Idaho Water Resource Board is working to restore the Eastern Snake Plain Aquifer to sustainable levels with a managed aquifer recharge program. Four years after the board started the aquifer recharge program in earnest, with funding from the Idaho Legislature, it has been meeting or exceeding annual recharge targets. You know, in Idaho, we were really lucky. We've got a legislature that really looked down the road, and they understand that we need to do something to make sure we take care of this great aquifer we have. And so they came up with a way to give us some money so that we could go out there and come up with some sites where we could recharge the aquifer and make that part of our yearly plan to continue to recharge the aquifer, to get water into it. And on the years when there's a lot of water, we can put more water in the aquifer and try to find a way so that we could level the aquifer out and keep that aquifer so it's there for us forever. The annual goal is to recharge an average of 250,000 acre-feet of water per year into the aquifer. In the winter of 2017, the board recharged 317,000 acre-feet of water into the aquifer. In the winter of 2018, it recharged more than 535,000 acre-feet of water into the aquifer, more than doubling the annual goal. Mother Nature has blessed southern Idaho with large amounts of snow in the mountains and bountiful water supplies. At the same time, board staff has moved quickly and aggressively to expand recharge infrastructure in the Eastern Snake Plain region, working with many canal companies and irrigation districts to develop a long-term sustainable recharge program. You know, water is the key to everything we do in Idaho, and people sometimes forget the southern part of the state we live in a desert. And it's important to realize the water we have there is one of the most precious resources we have. And so by doing aquifer recharge, it does a couple things for us. Number one, it makes sure that we have water for our future needs. Number two, it makes sure we have water for those great outdoor recreational opportunities that are important to us. And thirdly, it makes sure that all industries in the state, whether it be an agriculture or a fabricating plant or a food processing plant, they all need water. And that makes sure we've got water for our cities to grow, water for our farms to be sustained. And it's one of the most important things we'll do. The Eastern Snake Plain Aquifer is a Lake Erie-sized underground reservoir that stretches from St. Anthony in eastern Idaho to Hagerman, a distance of more than 250 miles. The aquifer serves a population of more than 400,000 people, more than one million acres of farmland, and many prominent commercial and industrial businesses. The ESPA stores approximately 200 to 300 million acre-feet of water. One acre foot equals the amount of water it takes to flood one acre of land to the depth of one foot. The depth to the groundwater varies from a few feet below the ground to more than 900 feet. Since the 1950s, the aquifer has been overdrafted by about 200,000 acre feet per year. The decline has been caused by reduced canal seepage, excess groundwater withdrawals, and the growing use of more efficient sprinkler irrigation. To bring the aquifer into balance, the Water Board is committed to recharging an average of 250,000 acre-feet of water per year into the ESPA. In wet years, the Board works to exceed the goal when surplus water is available to compensate for dry years, when less water will be available for recharge. In 2015, a historic water settlement occurred between farmers who pump water from the aquifer for irrigation and farmers who have senior water rights drawing surface water from the Snake River. In the settlement agreement, the groundwater users agreed to reduce their consumption by 240,000 acre-feet to stabilize the aquifer. Combined with the Water Board's 250,000 acre-foot commitment to recharge, that leads to a net increase in aquifer levels of 500,000 acre-feet per year. Scientists say that should stop the drop and begin to restore the aquifer. We're so excited about the results that we're seeing because number one, we're stopping the drop. If you add the four years we recharged up, we're almost to the average we want to attain, 250,000 acre feet a year. So the program's working. With funding from the Idaho Legislature, the Idaho Water Resource Board pays canal companies and irrigation districts an average of five to fourteen dollars per acre foot of water to use their distribution systems to send Snake River water flows into the aquifer via recharge basins, injection wells, and seepage in the Snake River Plain. Recharge operations normally occur in the late fall and winter months from mid-October through mid-April when surplus flows are available on the Snake River. 
The Idaho Water Resource Board currently has recharge water rights totaling 7,769 cubic feet per second of water flow. The board is working to increase those rights in the future. You know, we recharge in the winter for a couple reasons. One of the reasons in the winter, the canals are available to us. So instead of going out and building new canal systems that would cost us hundreds of millions of dollars, we use the existing infrastructure that's there. That's a great bargain for the state of Idaho. Second, the water at that time of the year is available for us to use. It's also very clean water at that time because of the low temperature, it kills pathogens and stuff, and we always protect the aquifer and monitor what we're doing with that water to make sure we do a good job with it. In the Upper Snake River region, the board has been working with numerous canal companies and irrigation districts to send water into the aquifer. One of the most productive recharge sites in the Upper Snake region is operated by the Fremont Madison Irrigation District. Surface water from the Henry's Fork River flows into a canal that carries the water into the desert overlying the ESPA. Here, the water slowly sifts through the sand into the uppermost end of the aquifer. In the Magic Valley area, multiple entities provide canal infrastructure to send Snake River surface water into the aquifer. The board has worked with American Falls Reservoir District Number 2 to create the board's largest and most productive recharge site in the Magic Valley region at milepost 31 on the Milner-Gooding Canal. So far, the board has spent $14 million on new conveyance infrastructure to carry water from canals to aquifer settling basins. The board expects to spend $40 million on infrastructure in both regions to reach full capacity in 2024. To meet the board's goal of recharging an average of 250,000 acre-feet of water per year, the board has to recharge at least 1,000 CFS on an ongoing basis from Upper Valley and Magic Valley recharge sites during the winter months. In the really wet years, it's really important for us to capture as much water as we possibly can before it leaves the state. On the really dry years, the most we can get into the ground is 150,000, way short of that 250,000 goal that we have. So we need even more capacity to capture as much water as we possibly can on those really wet years. So far, the canal companies and irrigation districts have been very supportive of the program and want to participate. Most importantly, they believe in it. That's the whole idea, it doesn't make a difference if you're a a domestic user, if you're a groundwater pumper or a surface irrigator or aquaculture, the, the recharge projects, if we can get the kind of water we need into the aquifer and be able to stabilize or start to raise the, the levels, it's a benefit for, for the entire state. The shareholders are really happy with this. It's a testament to what the state has done and their dedication to solving the aquifer problem. And th this is something that benefits everybody in this valley. We're happy to see their dedication to more recharge sites around, not just here in the Magic Valley, but in Eastern Idaho. And we just want to see it continue for the future. It's great, we're willing to participate in it when we can. Last fall we recharged for probably between five and six weeks under the state recharge right. We just do it for the, for the benefit of the aquifer. Conservation groups like the Henry's Fork Foundation also support aquifer recharge. The real benefit of recharge here at, at Egen Bench is essentially we get to use the water twice within the Upper Snake Basin. So that means you divert water from the river, you know, right out here. It goes out into the recharge basin and then that water influences returns to the river from here all the way down to Blackfoot and all the way to American Falls. So that water comes back in and it can be stored in American Falls Reservoir and then used subsequent years for the irrigators downstream. Aquifer Recharge also sends cool water back into the Henry's Fork in the hot summer months, benefiting the trout, Van Kirk says. The state's program is kind of what we tend to think of as a greater good program. I mean, there are so many benefits of aquifer recharge. Here, you know, I mentioned fisheries, you know, these wetland areas, that's a benefit. This, this maintains valuable habitat, wetland and riparian habitat. It has benefit to any groundwater user. Anybody who's got a well out here is going to benefit from managed recharge. We, we benefit basin-wide in the irrigation system. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a program that really benefits everybody in the entire state. Getting paid for participating in the recharge helps, too. 
As the board's capacity expands, they will be paying out roughly four to five million dollars in wet years and approximately 1.2 million dollars in dry years to all of the participating canal companies and irrigation districts. An important part of this program is the partnership that we built with the canal companies. A key component of that is being able to pay them for the work that they're doing and the infrastructure they already have in place for us to do recharge. Funding is huge for us. Uh, it's not just a free ride to send this water down the canal. It helps with our costs. And you know, there's added risks by having water in the canal in the winter, so it covers everything. It makes it a win-win for everybody. The Idaho Water Resource Board staff monitors water quality at the recharge basins before Snake River water sinks into the aquifer and in adjacent monitoring wells after the water goes into the aquifer. The Idaho Department of Environmental Quality and several federal agencies monitor water quality at four springs each year as water exits the aquifer from the cliffs above the Snake River in the Thousand Springs Complex near Hagerman. An estimated 300,000 people get their drinking water from groundwater wells throughout the eastern Snake River Plain, so maintaining good water quality is crucial. In terms of monitoring water quantity, more than 300 groundwater monitoring wells track how the aquifer responds to recharge efforts and reduced water use. So far the aquifer is responding in a positive way. In the spring of 2017, the monitoring well showed the aquifer had a net increase of 660,000 acre feet of storage from recharge flows and other sources. In the spring of 2018, the aquifer showed a net gain of 1.7 million acre feet of water, the largest single year increase in the last 80 years. Hydrology experts attribute the large increase to the aquifer recharge program, farmers reducing water use and doing private aquifer recharge under the Water Settlement Agreement, increased tributary flows, and natural seepage from two very wet winters in a row. Board staff monitors where the recharge water goes after it percolates into the aquifer. A big question on everyone's mind, where does the water go? First, hydrologist Mike McVeigh explains how the aquifer functions overall. Um, in general, the aquifer flows from northeast to southwest. If you draw an arrow perpendicular to these flow lines, you get the direction of flow. So you can see it flows down here, it wants to flow that way. Bends a little bit to discharge to American Falls Reservoir, but the majority of the water continues on down to the Thousand Springs area down in the Hagerman Valley. So it is a very large aquifer. Um, this aquifer doesn't exist in isolation. It's actually intimately connected with the surface water system. Um, particularly the Snake River. It's similar to a big bathtub, but a very leaky bathtub. The ESPA aquifer model shows how the recharge sites respond to recharge flows over a 10-year period. The green and beige colors show aquifer levels increasing over time. Milepost 31 at the Milner Gooding Canal, Shoshone Recharge Site, Aberdeen Springfield Site, Great Feeder Canal, Egen Bench Recharge Site. Mike McVeigh explains how the water reacts when it flows into the aquifer. You can kind of think of it as you know pouring some really thick syrup on a table. And when you, you throw it makes like a coin, and that coin wants to spread out in all directions equally. And that's kind of what happens here. You can kind of see it there where it's starting to spread out, it wants to go in all directions. You know, a recharge site that's closer to the river, obviously water won't stay in the aquifer as long. Again, it's easier to flow in open air than it is in the aquifer, so it'll take that chance and move right back to the river system. However, if you can move the recharge site away from the river, then you have a longer retention time. It just takes more time to get to that river system. Monitoring data shows the recharge water takes about five years to flow to the Snake River or Thousand Springs. Along with this, you know, retention time and the return flow properties, it turns out that about a third of the water that's put into each and bench benefits this reach of the Henry's Fork right here. It's kind of like an insurance policy, you know, for, for the dry years or the dry times of year. We take some water out of the river, particularly right now, springtime, there's a, there's a lot of water goes out in the ground and then we gradually get that back all the way through the summer and then in, in subsequent years. So it's a real benefit to the fishery. 
One of the methods used to track where the recharge water goes is to put colored dye in the water. The dye tracing study provides more detail about where water goes at a local level and it's helpful for locating recharge monitoring wells. Overall, the board and the Idaho legislature are pleased with the progress of the ESPA recharge program. And I think what's heartening is that the, the state has stepped up independent of the, of the agreement and, we ha and we're doing a managed recharge program like never before. So even if it were just an average year, I think you would see similar results of improvement or similar improvement because we are uh, putting more water in the aquifer than ever before. In fact, we hope to be viewed as a, an example and, and a model of how to fix aquifers westwide. We are nationally recognized for the things we are doing in this state. Well, I had an exciting opportunity to go back to Washington, D.C. and testify before a subcommittee in Congress that was looking at water issues in the West. And one thing people in Idaho can be really proud of, we have really are a step or two ahead of most states in what we're doing with water. We're also doing it in a cost-effective manner. Our recharge that we do in Idaho, and we look at other states like California, Texas, and, and the other states, it's very, very expensive. In California, it can cost as much as $800 to $900 an acre foot to recharge an acre foot of water. In Idaho, we can do that from $20 to $40 an acre foot. We do that because number one, we own the water. Number two, we use existing canal systems. And number three, we've got everybody in the state helping us make it work.